Hello, good afternoon. Um, today I want to talk about um, public art. You know, um, usually we kind of see art as in paintings, in galleries or museums. And um, it's very hard to define where public art is um, usually. And we usually see it in roundabouts, you know, or some uh, commission work in front of uh, finance buildings or in front of some buildings. So um, I do uh, work with installation art and um, it's all about experiencing, you know, the, um, uh, what the artist has created and the audience or the viewers, you know, get to experience what the work is about. So it's not just um, viewing a picture, you know, it's actually getting immersed into the installation itself. So um, I kind, kind of compelled and also drawn to natural materials. And uh, I've been working with uh, many different materials because of my profession. And um, I've been also playing with uh, um, organic materials. Like uh, this uh, image that I have here is actually collected from the streets, you know. And um, the, the, the we have this, all these trees around. And sometimes we kind of forget, you know, that we have all this natural environment among us and we take it for granted. Um, and how I then think about um, the things that we have in our household or the materials that we use and discarded, that I, I kind of like collected lots of plastic bottles and not sure what, where I could recycle them, but Somehow I collected them like around a thousand bottles in my kitchen, you know, and one day a friend came and visited me and asked me what are you going to do with it. Um, I, I said that I will kind of create something with it because I want to uh, upcycle it and not just upcycling for, um, uh, for functional purpose, but more like maybe to create an awareness in a way. Um, and then I've created all these um, sea creatures, you know, uh, because ironically, all these plastics will actually eventually end up in the ocean. And, um, and you know, there are beautiful uh, creatures under, under the sea that most of them might, might not even seen before. And we, the only way we could see is maybe National Geographic. And um, so some of them are just like my imagination, what would the sea be and the sea creatures, you know. And, and, uh, and somehow um, it was then translated that people were interested to see more of this and I get to um, exhibit it in galleries and, uh, and, and then I was thinking like, but it's about our environment, how is it then can I bring it out to the public? Because sometimes in galleries, not many people get to go to galleries and um, then I kind of got this opportunity to create some installation in some public space um, and, and also to kind of like reflecting on our natural uh, environment, you know, and, and within the city itself. And, and of course, this goes to like how this plastic, you know, get into the sea and I got involved and collaborated with Ida Retza, a uh, choreographer dancer to work on this project um, and uh, actually we founded this uh, uh, project called um, what do you call it? the river art project and and we created this performance with installation art and we actually uh, perform in uh, rivers in Sungai Penang and eventually for Georgetown Festival at the Prangin Canal in the middle of the city of Georgetown. And that's when um, I realized that through this uh, work that people could actually immerse themselves with this issue of um, waste that is getting into our river and polluting our river and also the sea. And when the audience came to this site, they were appalled by uh, the smell of the canal, you know, because eventually people don't really notice there was a canal there. And the performance actually drawn them to go to 
uh, watch the performance and at the same time they get to experience the sight of the condition. And, uh, and also there was this uh, uh, art festival in KL recently in 2014 that I got to participate. It's at the Botanical Garden in KL and it's quite amazing. The garden, um, the park and the garden has got all these beautiful uh, natural trees that we don't see every day in our city or in, in our suburbs, you know. And, uh, and it inspires me to um, look at how then this installation art could engage with the audience or the people who come to, to the park itself. So I've created this uh, by looking at the surrounding, because I work with uh, the context that I'm in, I, I saw the opportunity to somehow look at um, working on the organic materials, which is obviously the twigs, leaves and branches. And I saw that, well, maybe it could be a little bit more fun, you know, instead of just being making a sculpture and and get people to come and see it. So I've uh, kind of wanted it, I uh, created this uh, 15 feet high marinette, you know, it's like three times my height. Uh, and uh, it was uh, to allow people to uh, engage with this uh, installation. There was this uh, cranks that people can actually move the sculpture itself. So it's really a puppet and uh, the audience and the viewers who come by the, to the park, you know, get to see this huge installation and then um, obviously there's, there's the crank. There was no instructions but somehow people are drawn to it and they started cranking it and making um, this installation walking or dancing in a way. And in fact, um, it was in 2014 and I, yesterday one of the speakers here actually played with it before and she, she just was so excited and told me that like, wow, I remember this, I was playing with it. So I was very moved because it's 2014 and now it's 2017 and people still uh, kind of like remember, you know, that this piece of work actually um, was uh, somehow in their memories. So this, I, I feel that this installation has actually um, motivated me to look at how then this uh, work of art could be more engaging and connect with the viewers because sometimes um, if we are not artists, some of us, you know, we, we, we kind of not understand what the artist is trying to tell us and things like that. So um, this helped me to understand how then maybe there, there needs to be more of this sort of installation that is more engaging and also allow um, the viewers or audience to participate so, and, and I also uh, love performance art and not that I perform, more like I allow my installation to do the performance in a way. So, uh, again with Ida Regza, it was uh, in 2015 that uh, we also again collaborated in this project called Moved by Paddy. And it's, we started off with uh, going to a paddy field and we got permission uh, from one of the farmer to use his plot of paddy field, you know, to explore, to find out what's in the paddy field. And I've created um, this installation because um, paddy is something, or rice rather, is something that uh, we relate very closely to because we consume them every day. And, um, and it's also it's natural. And, it, and also, it's also cultural in a way because, you know, every festival or festive season, we have rice on our table and, and it brings us all together in a way. So there must be something about rice that we could kind of create um, a connection to because at the moment we are just eating the rice from, it's already made, cooked and we, we, some of us, you know, or maybe the younger generation kind of not know where it comes from and who actually do all this planting and what exactly is the source, you know, doing for us in a way. So there is a spirit to it, I would, I would mean. I would see it that way together with Ida that maybe there is a ritual that we could bring out of this rice planting um, um, and then uh, see what we can do. 
to bring out the, the semangat of the party in a way. So, and, and from that exploration, we, uh, we then went to find a, a place, you know, in the city. Again, it's for uh, Georgetown Festival that we were given uh, a site, an abandoned site actually, that, um, that we could actually plant the paddy uh, field in the city itself. So that's something that um, I think we don't really do get to see this every day, you know, because usually the city is filled with buildings and people are rushing and going to places. And, and we actually planted a paddy field in the city and it's just from the seed, the paddy seed, and it start growing and, and you can see it's, there's this uh, flats, you know, dense flats behind it. So, and you will, see, you will see there's a highway in front of it too. So, this, from this experience of planting and nurturing the paddy field, we get to see a lot of uh, phenomena, you know, in, in, within the field itself that it has created its own ecosystem um, of natural, uh, you know, uh, living creatures that we don't usually see uh, um, in our home or in our city. And it's, it's also, um, this um, installation is actually open to public for two weeks to come and visit the paddy field and people get to get around and move around and also discover all these uh, creatures and there's the ecosystem like frogs, dragonflies and some caterpillars and some interesting bugs that then we don't really you know get to maybe we will have to go to some museum or some zoo or some to just to look at all these uh, uh, creatures but it's it, it evolved to that you know that it has got so many things in it that somehow it's very spiritual if you got this contemplative uh, space you know and it's um, even though it's just, it looks like grass, but it's something that later on will become something that we consume, which is rice. And um, the, the installation I kind of like created is also made out of uh, organic materials because I want to be true to the, what we are trying to uh, create in, within that performance. So I use actually a jute, you know, to create this installation. I actually weave it. With my, uh, with my own hands and fingers. Um, there was, it's, everything is very natural, just like the farmer who uh, kind of like uh, seeded the paddy field and grow the paddy field with his own bare hands. And, and, and then we also, we didn't just, after the performance, we had um, this uh, harvest a month later, you know, we harvest uh, the, the rice the paddy and and then at the same time we get to see uh, still see these living creatures that's around us you know uh, and it's it's something that um, they're so immersive you know not just for me but also uh, for everyone who's involved and also for the audience who came to watch the performance because it's it's an outdoor performance and it's an outdoor installation and it's also open to public and um, and I think if I feel that there is more engagement in the sense for people just to come and enjoy the the whole uh, work and and from from growing rice to then the next uh, uh, work that I, I uh, work participate in is a curating bamboo installation in in Johor itself Iskanda. And is bamboo, um, we usually um, kind of see as a plant, as actually a plant, not a tree. And uh, this bamboo is um, quite interesting in a way because we actually also use bamboo a lot in our, maybe um, for our eat, uh, daily lives, which is like satay stick, it's made of bamboo. And we have like bachang, the dumplings that is, you know, uh, wrapped up with bamboo leaves. And also lemang, you know, it's so like when there's festive season, you see all the bamboo comes out. And, and I think we just see in a very small scale. And uh, in, in this project, you know, we, we're trying to see what else can bamboo do. 
And in fact, bamboo is as strong as steel for construction. So then we um, curated this uh, 15 installation art uh, from ASEAN actually, because the, the, obviously the other parts of the uh, Southeast Asia or ASEAN, they have already used a lot of bamboo. Like in Hong Kong, they use it for scaffolding. And then like in Indonesia, they use it to build uh, big, huge uh, buildings, complex. And for us here, we are still um, looking at it in a very small scale. And um, we invited all these uh, artists and architects actually to come and share their knowledge of uh, using bamboo. And by doing this installation art, they actually um, there is a transfer of knowledge. We invited the artists and the architect themselves and also uh, their assistants, carpenters to come and uh, build uh, this installation on site. And usually, most of the bamboo that comes to Malaysia is either import from China, Indonesia, or Thailand, even for maybe building materials. We, we don't have that um, resources or somehow the skill you know, to, to use our own bamboo to create uh, such uh, buildings or structures. So in this project, we actually harvested the bamboo from uh, Pontian itself in Johor. And uh, that's one of the uh, things that we, we did uh, for, for this project and, and also constructed on site. That there's, there was a lot of uh, people involved, uh, the artists themselves. And also we have crews you know, to come and help us uh, to work on this. And as you can see, that uh, these installations are not small, they are big, and they are there for two years, actually. Uh, so it's not permanent, and uh, it's kind of like something that uh, and is in, public, in a public realm. And people can actually come and visit and be immersed in this work. And I can see that this is like the beginning of how we can use organic materials in, in our public uh, space, in public art and how we can also nurture you know, the resources to become part of uh, uh, inclusive uh, into the works of public art installation. Thank you.